this is The Provoked Brawn, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about why I'm an idiot, and how you can avoid being an idiot too, or at least I sometimes make mistakes because uh, I'm only human, and there was a mistake in that initial shot, so if you could work it out before I get to it and explain what it is. A while back I purchased an RTX 4090 because I'm not careful with money, but I wanted to test out and see if it would fit in a number of different cases, and I wanted to do a video on that so that it would be useful to people. I tried to fit it into the Lee & Lee Air Mini. We could see in this video that it doesn't fit. And that's not because it won't fit in there. A viewer commented and told me that I'd made a mistake. And the mistake I am now going to point out to you is that I mounted the front fans on the inside of the fan tray instead of the outside. And I've also foolishly set the bottom fans to exhaust rather than intake. Now the reason for this is I built this PC in a hurry and I was building it for my daughter so she could play games on it, rather than for a video where I would have taken more time and more care over it. I did actually use this initially for a video, but then I redid it and I just rushed and made some stupid mistakes. So I'm using this as an excuse to sort of tell you to plan out your build and also take care when doing it. Just think about the logic of where things are gonna go. Take your time, don't rush. Because stupid, simple mistakes like this could obviously cause problems. Now, those fans being in the wrong position isn't necessarily a big issue. You know, just I can now just move them quite easily in because Lee and Lee fans uh, use clips to hold them in place and their cables are really easy to do. It's actually quite easy to maneuver them around. But bigger problems like air orientating your fans in the wrong direction exhaust instead of intake, for example, can obviously then cause co cooling problems. And I've done a video separately on the best orientation for fans to get maximum airflow. And this is actually a really good airflow case as well if you look at all the different fan setups we've got in here. So just swapping these around should be fairly straightforward. But it's important to sort of look at the specs of your case and what it can handle. Work out where you're going to put your radiator, for example. You can see I've side-mounted my radiator here. It's a 240 mil. I perhaps could have put it on the top, but you can see I've got 320 mil fans on the top. And obviously it wouldn't have as many fans then. And the radiator would have some gaps around the edges of it. Also, you've got to sort of plan out where the tubes are going to go. Because you can see they're blocking the RGB RAM in this instance. Which also doesn't look great. So it's the simple little things of taking your time over the build. Now, if you're interested in that sort of thing, be sure to check out my in-depth build guides. Because I often go into these sort of stupid mistakes and things to avoid. And hopefully sort of help work out what the logic is going to be for each of them and make your life a little bit easier. But you can see here that I've now fixed the problem with this Lee and Lee case and it should actually be a lot nicer. I've now got intake fans on the bottom and those front fans are now sorted out so there's now more room. Now in a different story, which is also one of stupidity, I recently got the NZXT Kraken Elite 280 and I realized that I had enough screws to do a push-pull setup and I had a couple of spare 140mm fans. These are actually different fans and I knew that at the time and I knew it was probably a mistake but I wanted to do a video on it to show why it's not logical to combine fans and I've done an in-depth video on this but basically combining different fans, they might have different specs, different airflow capabilities and more. But while sort of planning this video out and just going into doing it, I ended up mounting the fans with the radiator screws on both sides and therefore then making it impossible to mount the radiator on the case. Another stupid oversight that you probably wouldn't make, but something to think about and something to plan out perhaps. It's an interesting concept, the idea of making silly mistakes. But you can see here that sort of logic. And this is also another demonstration of why it makes sense to plan out your build even before you've purchased the parts. Make sure everything fits and is going to work logically. This is a 280mm radiator that I'm fitting in a case that could actually take a 360mm both on the front and the top. So 360 would be preferable. Now, I did use a push-pull logic, as I said here, but another mistake that I made was initially I went into it thinking I was going to top-mount it, so I set the fans to intake or exhaust out of the case via the radiator, so you can see them facing down, 
And now I'm going to have to swap them round so that they're facing the other way. So I've actually made myself a lot more work than necessary. And if I'd have thought it out beforehand and planned out what I was going to do, then I wouldn't have had this issue. You might not have this problem, but I think it's worth thinking about. A 360mm radiator would have been better here. And also top mounting it probably would have been preferable, at least in my opinion. I've done a video on this where I tested different positions for the radiator in the case and sort of the performance of it. But I'm of the opinion that top mounting is still the best option. But it, here you can see the sort of logic of it. Now, it is nice to sort of th work things out as you go along. Uh, maybe we could, you know, maybe I wouldn't have done push pull. And actually the performance of the push pull is superior to not doing it. But then it does have that downside to it. So, for example, you can see that I can't fit the 4090 in here in the same way I couldn't fit it in the Lee and Lee case, but for different reasons. Because now those fans on the radiator are in the way. Whereas if I just mounted them to the front or if this radiator was mounted on top, I wouldn't have that problem. So I could have fit the 4090 in here. So although a case might say, you know, maximum length for a GPU is like 400 millimeters, for example, if you end up putting a radiator on the front like this with a push-pull setup, then obviously you're reducing the chances of being able to do that. However, I could comfortably fit a 3090 in there, so it wasn't the end of the world, but who's got loads of GPUs knocking around? So it's worth thinking about this beforehand rather than having to undo all the logic of what you've done. And also think about the placement of your radiator tubes. That's another big consideration. Again, I've covered that in the AIO placement video, so be sure to check that out. But hopefully sort of this sort of logic will help. Don't forget to use PC Part Picker, for example, before you buy your parts to make sure they're all compatible. That can be really useful. But just planning out before you even get started can really help. This has been The Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.